and welcome to this session. I have prepared um, a research paper actually that I'm working on that I have started since 2009. Because the, the first time I was introduced to the concept of connectivism uh, was in 2009, whilst I was doing my master's degree in human resource development. One of my courses, e-learning, uh, this, this word came up from my, from my um, professor. And then he just dismissed, she just dismissed it as, um, like, as important though, but like um, n not much is known about it. So that was when I started, I, I thought I could, I could use that because that was the time also I was looking for uh, something to, to write my dissertation on. So connectivism therefore became something very meaningful to me. So I actually wrote a bit about it when I did my research, because I was looking at organizational culture and its impact on um, organizational learning. Specifically, I was looking for one type of culture, that is the innovative type of culture. How does it impact organizational learning? And then my professor told me, look, people have done research over on this all over. So what's something, because in research at least, uh, apart from moving facts from one location to, other, to the other, or like exposing hidden ones, one of the things you need to do in research is at least make a, a small contribution that nobody had done before. So I said, okay, I will now take connectivism now and infuse it between innovative culture and organizational learning. So I had it as a mediating effect. But then, um, today, I'm looking at it from a different perspective. Uh, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to operationalize it that's the topic. Operationalizing connectivism as a research construct. Uh, I heard a speaker mention about the importance of measuring. I think it was David. Uh, some things, uh, I wanted to use the opportunity when I stand here to kind of defend that, but I don't need to defend it because one of the things he mentioned that should be measured was on, well, he mentioned a list of things and Connection was part of it, and that's what I'm trying to measure. We've been talking about connectivism for a long time, and some people think it's not still good enough to be a theory. Uh, but I have moved beyond that stage, because I don't see any other theory that addresses learning as we have it today in society than connectivism. I, I mean, behaviorism is still relevant. Cognitivism, constructivism, they're still relevant, but um, they have come at a time when it's a, different, it's a different game altogether. It's talking, we're now talking about information. And it's, we're talking about information in large volumes. Okay? And we know there is a link between information and knowledge. So we cannot just uh, use uh, theories because behind any educational practice, there must be an underlying theory, right? Even if you do evaluation, you must base it on some theory that will support whatever you are doing, okay? So that is why I want to uh, bring out connectivism so that we can, how do, like if I ask you in, for example, um, what's the name of this place? Like um, Habitat Center, like it's an, it's an, I know it's an institution. How can I say they are practicing connectivism? That's one. Two, how, to what level are they uh, practicing connectivism. So if I can do this successfully, then we can use this construct that I want to create to be able to measure connectivism in, in an institution of learning and also in, in workplaces, okay? So uh, we, we'll... Now, I, I also brought this up because uh, I believe in this also, that schools and higher institutions uh, should be mirrors of our society. Every society, the education system you have, should mirror the, the needs of your people. So we cannot have a, a generation of learners who are very interested in, for example, um, technology, and you are, you are stuck in an education system that wants to ignore um, technology. So there will be a gap. 
And that gap definitely will not, will not help. So that's why I say, therefore, our education systems must reflect the needs of, of our societies. Wherever society is heading, that's where our education system should head. It could be the other way around. The system can head and pull people to follow. But if also the system is slow and people start moving ahead, the system should try to catch up with the, with, with the people. Okay? So then I'll give you a little bit, bit of background of this research in progress. So I'm hoping today I may get some meaningful feedback that I would be able to use to be able to put into this paper and make it ready. Okay, so this is one of the reasons why I am, I am here. So I will just give you um, things that if you are familiar with connectivism that you must have come across something like this. That is a learning theory that addresses the inadequacies of old, older theoretical models. And then I want to also test the existence of connectivism in an empirical study. Okay? And then I would also want to operationalize it, like I mentioned in the beginning, that it can be observed or measured with a certain degree of objectiveness. Okay. And this paper also, um, therefore, intends to develop a measure for connectivism, which will enable other researchers to measure the concept at workplaces and educational institutions. I'll give you an example. When I did the research in my master's degree, um, I'm sure most of you are more seasoned because we're just coming into research and I know research is also practice-based. If you do not practice it, you cannot master the skills. And I know some of you have gone beyond that level of mastering the skills of research. But what I'm trying to say is um, uh, when I had culture and organizational learning, uh, my professor told me you need to be able to get a measurement for this. And then I said, okay, I will develop one. She said, no, that's difficult. It's difficult to, to develop a measure. And that's why I said I don't want you to do connectivism because I have not seen anywhere in literature where uh, someone presents in, in empirical findings as a research finding results uh, that will show that this is a construct, okay, measuring connectivism. There hasn't been. Okay? And since then, um, I, I have been struggling to be able to get at least a construct to measure this, 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 this concept, okay? So the overview, few things, that information is important in society today, just like we, when we talked about the industrial age, it was oil. Every age have something that was more credible to them, something that they wanted more. And for our age, it is information. So we said we can equate information to this economy, knowledge economy, just like the oil was to the industrial era. And hence, in today's knowledge-intensive and highly globalized workforce, employees should be part of a wired workforce. Okay? Most of these things, um, since this presentation, if you read the paper, they are, they are citations. And most of them, too, are not my own generations. But then there are some things I met in literature, and I was able to uh, read them, and I think they are very useful, so I have got them. But in the paper, if you read the research paper, I have got the relevant citations. And most of them, uh, you will find George Siemens' name there and Stephen Downs and anybody who has been very much into connectivism. I have done that a lot. Um, a connected working environment where information flows, flow and sharing and collaboration and networking and exchange of knowledge is not restricted. Because restriction, for example, in the form of a bureaucracy, it, it, it kills innovation. You, don't, you cannot do anything. So that idea of, like someone said during this session, democratization of learning. Uh, that's what we are talking about here. There should be no restrictions. However, there is massive information flow in the digital era, and it changes too rapidly. So therefore, how our organizations learn and transform and perform in this realm of massive information and abundance of knowledge is what is of significance to this study. That's what I want to look at. There is so much. So how do we contain it? I've even read in a book that there's too much knowledge to contain in one person's head. Because by the time you put something in, something new is coming out. So what do you do? And you have one small head. 
So how do you do with all this information? So that's why it makes sense to use connectivism. Because now that, 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 that knowledge that you cannot store in your head can be stored in, can be, that's what we call, what, what, what I interpret as the distribution of knowledge. It's in the network. So you just need to connect to where the information is. In other words, connect to someone who knows what you want to know in order for you to know what you want to know. That's how it works. Okay? So now we... Um, I also try to define connectivism, not according to how uh, Dr. George Siemens defined it or how Stephen or any other person. I try to define it based on the objectives of my research. Okay, so I, I will just go through the definition. It's a short definition. I said, for the purpose of this paper, connectivism is defined as a learning theory that stresses the importance of connecting people to people and people to information in the digital age through a process that is both enabled and enhanced by technology. So I'm not talking about the connection that is not, that is not, um, that is not enabled by technology. I'm looking at it from a specific point of view. Okay? But at this point, I also want to say, by the time we look at the, the, the way I want to approach getting this construct in place, uh, I will not only look at, um, for example, later on we'll see that I'm looking at two aspects. I'm looking at social media, and I'm looking at also KM, knowledge management. Because um, you will see that knowledge management also does not only stop at only creating, it goes beyond that, like sharing, exchanging, using, utilization, and all that. So we will be looking at these two things very briefly. <laughs> okay. um, so I look at now social media as a practice of connectivism. So for the purpose of this research, I also define social media, not according to other people's definition, but according to the objectives that I have. The social media is defined as those social software technologies that are used to facilitate knowledge transfer and communication processes within the organization. Okay, so that's how I define social media here. And, uh, and as such, that's the approach I use. In addition, these tools are used to enhance learning for example, for new business development initiatives, whilst maintaining the organization's innovative capabilities as well as its competitive advantages. So social media goes beyond communication processes and also knowledge transfer. It can help you in new product development initiatives and also maintain your innovative capabilities. Then I have got a list here. It's, like I said, it's not exhaustive. But I have chosen them, and I'm still um, welcoming anyone's opinion that there is one important one that I have left behind. It's not exhaustive, but I'm looking at this based on the definition I made. They, the, each of these are capable of knowledge transfer, and so on and so forth, according to the definition. So I have wikis and Google Docs, Skype, blogs, LinkedIn, YouTube, Dropbox, Twitter. Like I said, it's not exhaustive. So this becomes very important when I try to now develop the construct because in the interviews and in, or in the questionnaires, uh, uh, whoever is answering it, you will have to put the, keep this um, uh, list of social media in, in place. Okay? Then, then knowledge management as practices of connectivism. Knowledge management is essential about getting the right knowledge to the right person at the right time. That's really important, knowledge management. Get the right knowledge to the right person and give it to him or her at the right time. It represents cross-division, cross-region, cross-departmental knowledge sharing in an organization, in capturing and sharing, creating, reusing, and organizing knowledge. It's very effective in that. Okay. So this implies that knowledge management and connectivism work together. That knowledge management is the practice. Like I said before, every practice must have a theory to support it. And therefore, connectivism will be the, the valid theory behind knowledge management practices. You, you, can, you, can, you can make the um, connections there. So I have also got a list of tools that I want to use for, for, for this purpose. And communities of practice. Um, maybe I should have added online communities of practices 
email systems, in any uh, e-learning systems, uh, knowledge portals, video conferencing, um, intranet, for example. These are all, they can all be used, remember, as the earlier definition of reusing, capturing, distributing, organizing knowledge. I feel these tools can. Uh, after you look at it, if you think um, video conferencing shouldn't be there and we can justify it, I'll definitely do that because that's the purpose I'm putting it forward to all of you to, to help me make sure that whatever I'm presenting is the right thing. Okay. So, um, okay, quickly I'll just show you the methodology uh, is, of this is I'll, I have done an extensive literature review, so I'm also doing a expert interviews. This is going to help me um, construct a prototype model of connectivism. Okay, uh, this is actually a hyperlink there. If I move on it, you could see um, the kind of um, interview questions that I have. Uh, but uh, I think we just need to move on. And then I have also done a thorough synthesis of literature to highlight the definitions, dimensions, indicate, indicators, manifestations of the use of connectivism in educational institutions and, and organizations. Um, the expert interviews, what am I going to do with them? Huh? They are going to use, I'm going to use these inter expert interviews, uh, responses that I have, to validate what I have in literature. What I read in the books, is that what the experts are saying? So I need that validation. Okay? And also, um, I will also provide a survey questionnaire, which also I have put a draft um, on, uh, which, which definitely when I talk to uh, people one-on-one, uh, -on -one, I can show you if you're interested and you can help us in getting there. So this data then will be analyzed by the researcher to determine the reliability and validity of the newly developed measure of connectivism. So summary and expected findings. Connectivism is a very new concept to us, and as such, before any researcher can test the existence of, uh, of connectivism in an empirical study, it will be critical to first operationalize the concept into a research construct that can be observed or measured with a certain degree of objectiveness. So that's, that's what I expect to have, a construct that I will present that will be like that. And um, this paper, therefore, intends to develop a measure for connectivism which will enable other researchers to measure the concept at workplaces and educational institutions. And also, um, it will also help um, not only HRD researchers, but any researcher in, in the field of education who um, is, want to uncover the phenomena of learning or knowledge creation in the digital age. So I, I thank you so much. And um, I will welcome feedback um, on questions. Thank you so much. Yeah.